I've talked about the best levels in the Crash Bandicoot series, so it was only a matter of time before I talked about the worst. The ones that are hard, frustrating, unfair, boring, makes you want to pull your hair out. They're all here in my top 10 worst Crash Bandicoot levels. If you've managed to get at least 15 relics in Crash Bandicoot Warped, you can unlock the hidden level required for full completion, Area 51. The motorcycle levels can be difficult in general with its controls and the pits, but Area 51 takes it even further. I can't see sh This entire level is pitch black with only a little light coming from your motorbike. This makes it incredibly difficult to see boxes coming, especially if you are going too fast, you can easily miss them. On top of this, the racers have been replaced with UFOs and their fat hitboxes, making it even harder not to bump into them. Since this is the last motorbike stage, there's almost no room for error. I hope you've gotten good at holding the boost, otherwise, good luck. Any Crash Bandicoot 2 fan will know about this stage, but this mostly applies to when you are trying to complete it fully, aka all of the boxes. Cold Hard Crash, what may seem an okay snow level when just going for the crystals turns into a nightmare when trying to go for the gems. This level has a huge box tally on top of death fruit full of nitro and ice physics. Oh, and a gem at the end. Even if you don't go for the gem here, which there would be no reason not to if you are actually attempting a death route, it's required to get all the boxes since there are crates on this path. Not only do you need to get to the end, you then have to backtrack otherwise the end path will skip boxes. Most people going for 100% are going to have to either sacrifice a life or do this death route multiple times to get both gems. This makes it one of the hardest levels, if not the hardest level to complete in Crash Bandicoot 2. At least it's only if you are trying to get the true ending. Crash Bandicoot 4 decided to take a page out of the original and make the entire premise hard, and if not, unfair at times. There's quite a few ball busting stages, but one that stuck out to me the first time I played was Bears Repeating. This is another stage where going for completion turns into a fairly tricky stage to where I don't want to do this anymore. There's a reason why I mentioned this stage in my Crash Bandicoot 4 video, which I'll put a card to on the top right corner of the screen. So many boxes to collect on top of obstacles to avoid. They even throw in a bridge section like in the bridge levels in Crash 1. After all that, you are then treated to a polar section where hitting all the boxes were a pain in the backside. They kind of fixed the hitbox issue, but it's still a pain. Moral of the story? Don't complete Crash 4. You'll question your life's choices. This level in Crash Bandicoot is no joke. The first game is notorious for being difficult and the lab is one of the hardest and I'm not even talking about getting the boxes. Hiding a TNT behind normal crates, bottomless pits, electric devices, electric scientists that are hard to deal with, floors that disappear and reappear, jumping over bottomless pits while avoiding electricity. This level requires timing and patience. The only saving grace, it's a short level. You've played Crash Bandicoot, and if you've managed to get this far, this could be your stop. They weren't joking with the name Slippery Climb, though I'd probably say more of a death climb more than anything. Platforms that gradually move faster over spikes or bottomless pits, ledges that go in and out quickly, steps that turn into slides to drop you into spikes, platforms that move all over the place. Get used to jumping off a vulture onto another or to a moving platform because this stage will really test your precision. And I'm not even talking about getting all the boxes. Doing this with no deaths? I think I'm gonna cry.
slippery climbs harder cousin. Yeah, you heard me. This level was so frustrating, so difficult and unfair that it wasn't available in the original game unless you hacked it. Did you hear what I just said? It was too hard to be in the original. But guess what? The Insane Trilogy has us covered because they brought it back as optional content. And let's just say, I get why it's not in the original. It's slippery climb, but cranked up to the max. More difficult jumps, more spikes, more collapsing stairs. Slippery climb seems like a test for this level. Stormy Ascent expects perfection. But if you do somehow manage to beat it, you feel like a champion. But was it worth it? Now here's a Crash Bandicoot 4 level that's just hard, regardless on whether you're getting the gems. This is like the lab, but worse, with more freedom of movement. Toxic floors, difficult hazards to avoid, timing your wall running and jumps, lava, mine carts with spikes, twisting pipes of electricity on top of the stage being pretty long makes toxic tunnels exhausting to get through. And don't even get me started on the boxes. You'll be done with the stage by the end. I have to mention the bridge levels from Crash 1. A lot of people talk about High Road being the more difficult one of the two, but I don't agree. I have an easier time with High Road since jumping off the turtles feel way easier than what Road to Nowhere expects from you. Jumping on tiny planks of wood which some fall away after a second and some you can't even land on, or with the tank controls, you are dying a lot. Not to mention the immortal hogs getting in your way and they can defy gravity? What's up with that? Let's throw some slippery surfaces and small planks of wood with hogs all at the same time. I'm sure that will go down well. Cortex's castle is an absolute gauntlet of pain and misery. It's kind of neat that the level will get you to use all of your powers here, but f this stage. It can kiss my ass. By the time I got here, I was done with Crash 4 to the point where I wanted to turn the game off and throw the disc as far as I possibly could. Speaking of perfection, your fingers will be doing so much gymnastics you didn't even know was possible and probably should seek a doctor. Lasers, bottomless pits, spinning spikes, constantly switching masks to avoid incoming danger, TNT jumping. If beating Stormy Ascent made you a champion, you will fall like a god after this stage, especially if you somehow manage to do this without dying, which is required to get 106%. Oh, never again. Well, this was a tricky one and probably sticks out compared to the face bashing choices I made earlier. Now we just have an annoying vehicle level, Smokey and the Bandicoot, from Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. It's been a while, so my opinions could easily change, but going back to this recently reminded me why this is probably the worst of these driving stages. The controls are absolute garbage. Turning is awful, trying to avoid pits while being fast enough to overtake the races? Getting the boxes is just horrible. It might not actually be the worst stages in terms of difficulty, but I find zero enjoyment in the stage. Glad it's not long, but I just don't want to deal with it. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong though, while you check out another Crash Bandicoot video on screen. Till next time.